Hey, Kelly. Are you a foursome guy? Uh, No. No, I'm not. Well, we're going to delve into that a little bit deeper because this is Bog Panda. I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on Everything. And joining me, as always... Um, a highly concerned Kelly at K E L L Y H U L on Twitter and Instagram because in preparation for the show, Mike shared he had a visual aid. <laughs> and Mike leads off with a question. <laughs> and my concern, I mean, I was already right, obviously when Mike says he's got a visual aid, he's very excited to do a show where he can use this visual aid. That's a flag. That's that's something to be concerned about. <laughs> uh, and then, um, it only gets worse when uh, we get a little intro like that. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how well uh, uh, things go here. You know, Mike's Mike's feed might be the only one that goes dark on this show. So we'll see. <laughs> well, today we're going to make this a quick one for you guys. Um, there's been a ton of Alice Cooper stuff, of course. There's the new live album from Hollywood Vampires. Road is coming out. The new album from Alice and his touring band, which we're very excited about. And it's not so much of a secret that we made that happen. So, yep. which you know, just a factual thing that we're stating. Um, there's been some reissues with some live tracks and different things and some alternate takes, which is great. But rhino which is a division of warner brothers that focuses more on like collectible type stuff like box sets and things like that is releasing for the first time in i think it's almost 50 years right or is it 50 years uh 73 came out in 73 so yeah 50 years so for the first time in 50 years billion dollar babies is going to be released in the quadraphonic mix uh that was available so were you a quad stereo guy sir uh, never have been uh didn't didn't have the means uh, initially uh and uh then subsequently i just it's never been like the top priority for me i and it wouldn't necessarily be quadraphonic but um and i believe it was music for airports the brian eno on the back of music for airports had the diagram and how to set up all the speakers to maximize your enjoyment of of the album and um that looked too hard for me. So I'm kind of like, yeah, it just needs to kind of work for me with the my kind of cheap speakers and all that kind of stuff. So, no, were you? No, never, never really. Um, I don't get too as much as as I am a huge music collector. I don't get too snobby about audio quality because the reality of it is, as somebody who who works on music and has mixed and mastered albums, while I can tell the difference between stuff, I'm also very much aware that the average person absolutely can't tell the difference between different mixes and things like that. They may tell you that they can, but they absolutely can't. I assure you. It's the perfect, you know, example of this is all of this controversy that's going over on about backing tracks at shows and things like that. Something that's been commonplace since the 70s <laughs> happening that people are just realizing happens now. Um you know, it, it's because you can't tell. I can, but most people can't tell. I can tell because I'm looking for it, unfortunately. I can't just sit back as an audience member. I just immediately kind of start looking at the behind the scenes stuff it shows, <clears throat> which I enjoy. I'm not saying that it takes away from my enjoyment of it, but I can't lose myself in, in the crowd to just not see the stuff that they're doing on stage. So I know that the average person doesn't know or care how the difference is between these i do prefer like i'm a big vinyl person and i do prefer when i'm buying vinyl to get 180 gram vinyl virgin vinyl if possible it does sound slightly better it definitely plays back slightly better you don't have to worry about with a heavier record you don't have to worry about it slipping and things like that again though the minor differences in audio quality the average person wouldn't care about what has always interested me with the and I never got into surround sound mixes of albums. That was a thing that really kind of was a thing a little bit when DVDs came out. There's been some Blu-ray ones prior to this as well. Um, this Billion Dollar Babies reissue is on a Blu-ray disc. <clears throat> and the thing that, that kind of interests me about it, though, and how I found out about this was actually Black Sabbath's album, Paranoid, which is 
for anybody who isn't a Black Sabbath fan, by far their most popular album in terms of sales. Uh, not my favorite Black Sabbath album. This is very much like Alice. Alice's biggest album by a wide margin in terms of sales is trash. Not my favorite Alice Cooper record. And I think Kelly feels the same way. Yep. That's kind of the same thing with Black Sabbath. Paranoid is by a long shot their best selling album. Not my favorite album by them. But I've always heard about this quad mix of the album and how it's a really different listening experience. Quadraphonic records, though, didn't sound great from what I'm told, because most of them, just like a lot of vinyl, wasn't mixed properly. They just did it quickly and cheaply as possible. So a lot of them didn't sound great and it never took off. There wasn't like there was tons of these releases. And to Kelly's point, too, it would have been very expensive for the average person to set that up back then. There was, by Rhino, though, <laughs> um, a few years back, a box set that was released, a deluxe edition of Paranoid. Again, not my favorite album, but I did buy it because it came with some a, a lot, actually, of live material and things like that. One of the things it included, though, was this stereo mix down of the quadraphonic version of the album. So they took the four channel audio, brought it back down to two, but kept everything more separate in the stereo channels to kind of give you a cheap version of the effect of what you would get with the quadraphonic version of it. So it de it definitely made me interested in it. And that's actually what this article focused on was that for the first time in 50 years for this as well, this is being released in the actual original mix, which was meant to be a four channel mix of it. So I don't know if Billion Dollar Babies was meant to be that way. This is one that always gets a lot of attention, paranoid, because apparently the band intended it to be listened to this way and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's how Billion Dollar Babies was meant to be presented. But of course, as soon as I clicked on it and saw that, I had to share it with you. And we never really talked about that. I, I didn't know how deeply you got into all the audiophile tech side of things. No, not not much. And I mean, I think it makes sense that you know, Billion Dollar Babies was ultimately... Uh, a concept album about excess, uh, excess, and um, you know where the band, you know, kind of where the band was at now, and so it was about about that mostly. So that that idea, and if you think about things like Hello Hooray, they kind of come in with like a lot of a lot of stuff going on with it. I, I guess you can, you know, it might not have surprised me to say, oh yeah, we're and we're angling for that to be a way, uh for this to be consumed on that. But, um, but I, I don't recall ever kind of name my reading on it going, yeah, and this was definitely the target. I, it fits. If there's an Alice Cooper album, that's going to go this route. That seems like a really strong candidate. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I know it is one of the top Alice Cooper albums. <laughs> I would even, some have said second best behind um, so, <laughs> you know the a the average person the average person who listens to <laughs> alice cooper you know could i could see how the average person could say yeah number number two but i you know highly knowledgeable on alice cooper so i can comfortably say number one <laughs> now and it does include in addition to the quadraphonic mix you also get a higher end remaster of the album itself um, and again, on a Blu-ray disc, $25 is the price that it's going for. I don't think that's too bad. I mean, for a lot of people, this will be them buying these albums for like the third or fourth time. So I don't think you could ask for too much more than that and still get people on board with it. This is definitely something that's more for like a, a niche audience, though. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, as as evidenced by the conversation, I'm a big fan of Billion Dollar Babies, but I for less than this, and you, know, you can get the Alice Cooper Billion Dollar Babies Deluxe Edition, which will be, I think, still has some cleaned up audio or remastering on Billion Dollar ba the 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 studio album, but then it includes, you know, Billion Dollar Babies tour, uh, time period, uh, live recordings uh, of the original Alice Cooper group, and so you get to. And there's not a ton of live Alice Cooper group stuff out there. So this is uh, at least out there in legitimate bootleg wise, tons of stuff you can get the original Alice Cooper group. But in terms of kind of sanctioned 
um, you know, fully licensed ROM versions of Alice Cooper Live, Alice Cooper Group Live. Uh, this is it. And it's got, you know, almost every track, tons of the tracks of Billion Dollar Babies on it, but it's also got I'm 18 and uh, School's Out and some other stuff like that. So it's good. It's good stuff. Absolutely. So th- this doesn't seem like something you'll necessarily pick up then. Nope. No, I'm pretty happy with my deluxe set. I'm good with that. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know if I'm sold on it yet, personally. Um, again, what caught my attention is the Black Sabbath thing, just because I've heard so much about this and sort of got to listen to it in this stereo version of it that Rhino had released previously. But the band, there's tons of stuff with the band talking about it and fans gushing over it. So I'm probably going to pick up the Black Sabbath one just to kind of see what all the fuss was about 50 years ago. <laughs> But I, I haven't really seen anything with Billion Dollar Babies saying that, you know, the band preferred this version of it or it was intentionally, you know, it was in the back of their mind writing it that this is the way it was going to be presented. But being big Alice fans, it being his second best album, we definitely wanted to let everybody know about it. Yep, absolutely. Check it out. Let, let us know in the comments if you're a... a, a, a quadraphonic sound kind of person and why we're, you know, what, why I'm missing the boat and need to change my investment strategies and set myself up with a better environment and, and do all those things. But, uh, but if uh, you kind of kind of want to stand up for that side of it and kind of talk a little more about what we're missing there, love to hear, hear about it here. If you're interested in kind of getting this or anything else you'd like to kind of see come out in this format. Yeah. And if nothing else, like I personally don't have any audio Blu-rays. So I'm interested in that side. <laughs> yeah, that is that is intriguing. Cool. All right, great. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Mog Panda.